on behalf of the DIVA trial investigators and the entire Veterans Affairs Cooperative Studies Program 571 study team, it is my privilege to present the primary results of the drug eluting versus bare metal stents in saphenous vein graft angioplasty DIVA trial. The results were presented on August 26, 2017 at the European Society of Cardiology meeting in Barcelona. These are my disclosures. Saphenous vein grafts are known to have high rates of both early as well as late failure. There are several strategies under investigation for preventing early failure and occlusion. For severe lesions, bare metal stents have high rates of free stenosis and reocclusion, and drug eluting stents have been proposed as a solution. Four randomized trials have been performed to date comparing drug eluting and bare metal stent in vein grafts. Three of them, the SOS trial, the ISAR cabbage, and the basket savage, did demonstrate benefit with drug eluting stent, whereas the risk trial showed harm with drug eluting stents. The largest study was the ISAR cabbage that randomized 610 patients to bare metal or drug eluting stents. The primary endpoint was the 12-month composite of death, MI, and target lesion revascularization that was lower in the DES group, driven by lower rates of target lesion revascularization. However, those studies had important limitations. All of them were unblinded, and all of them used first-generation drug eluting stents. Also, those studies included a small number of patients, except for ISAR cabbage. They had routine and geographic follow-up, except for basket savage, and they had low rates of embolic protection, less than 5% in the ISAR cabbage study. The DIVA trial was designed to provide a rigorous assessment of the safety and efficacy of drug eluting stents in vein grafts. It was a prospective, double-blind, multi-center randomized trial with a primary endpoint, the 12-month incidence of target vessel failure that was defined as the composite of cardiac death, target vessel myocardial infarction, or target vessel revascularization. Patients with a 50 to 99% de novo stenosis of a vein graft were randomized one-to-one -to, -one to either a drug eluting or a bare metal stent. Patients who did not have an acute coronary syndrome could receive blinded clopidogrel or placebo to maintain the blinding. And patients were followed clinically for a minimum of 12 months or until the end of the study, whichever was longer. The design paper was published yesterday at the Clinical Cardiology Journal. The study was sponsored by the Veterans Affairs Cooperative Studies Program in the United States and was led by an executive as well as a steering committee. Adjudication was performed by an independent DSMB and uh, there was an independent clinical events committee as well as an angiographic and EKG core laboratory. Patients could be included in DIVA if they were 18 years of older, and they had planned PCI of a 50 to 99% de novo vein graft lesion in a vessel that was estimated to be 2.25 to 4.5 millimeters in diameter and was causing ischemia. There had to be an intent to use an embolic protection device, and the patients had to agree to participate and take the prescribed medications and provide written informed consent. Patients were excluded if they had planned non-cardiac surgery within 12 months, presentation with STEMI, if the target vein graft was the last remaining vessel or left main equivalent, if they had any previous therapy of the target lesion or any therapy of the target vessel during the past 12 months, if they were at high risk for bleeding, if they had a positive pregnancy test, life expectancy was less than 12 months, if there was a history of allergic reaction to DS drug or metal, allergy to clopidogrel if they did not have an acute coronary syndrome, and if they participated in another randomized control trial. An initial sample size of 519 patients was selected to achieve 90% power for the primary endpoint of target vessel failure at 12 months, assuming an event rate of 30% in the bare metal stent arm 
and 18% in the drug eluting stent arm. During an interim analysis, because of lower than anticipated target vessel failure rate, the sample size was increased to 762 patients. However, in December of 2015, the study was stopped after 599 patients were enrolled. Two of those patients were not included in the analysis because of improper consent, leaving 597 patients. A total number of 123 events was needed to have 90% power for the primary endpoint. In the study, there were 109 primary events, which provide a post hoc power of 86% for the primary endpoint. Enrollment was done at 25 VA sites across the United States. The top three enrollers were Dr. Mavromatis from Atlanta, Dr. Banerjee from Dallas, and Dr. Sang from San Francisco. Between 2012 and 2015, 3,482 patients were screened, of whom most screen failed due to not meeting the geographic criteria. A total of 597 patients were enrolled, representing 97% of those with protocol eligibility. 292 were randomized to drug eluting stents and 305 to bare metal stents. There were very few patients lost to follow-up for the primary endpoint, providing follow-up rates of 98.6 and 99.7%. And there was also significant follow-up for the patients during the long term, with 94% in the DS group and 92% in the bare metal stent group having long-term follow-up. The patient characteristics were well balanced between the two study groups, with the exception of saphenous vein graft age that was slightly older in the DES group. Mean age was 69 years and 99% of the patients were men. Approximately half of the patients presented with an acute coronary syndrome, 60% had diabetes mellitus, and more than half had previous myocardial infarction. Approximately 40% of the vein grafts were anastomosed to the right coronary artery, 40% to the circumflex, and 20% to the LAD. The lesion was located in the vein graft body in approximately 70%, in the ostium in approximately 20%, and in the distal anastomosis in less than 10%. The pre-stenting percent diameter stenosis was 83% in both groups. TIMI3 flow was present in approximately 80% of patients in both groups. There was minimal diameter stenosis after standing, and 97 to 99% of patients had TIMI3 flow. Unfractionated heparin was the most commonly used anticoagulant, with a glycoprotein 2 b 3 a inhibitor used in approximately 15% of cases. Approximately 10% of patients require stage PCI. An embolic protection device was used in 69% of the study lesions. The mean number of target vein graft lesions was 1.2. The mean number of stents was 1.3. And the mean number of non-target lesions intervened was 1.4. 89% of the stents used in the drug eluting stent arm were second generation drug eluting stents. The total stent length was 27 millimeters mean, and the mean stent diameter was 3.4 millimeters. Success and complication rates were similar in the two study groups, with slightly lower periprocedural MI rates in the drug eluting stent arm. The primary endpoint of target vessel failure at 12 months occurred with similar frequency in the drug eluting stent and the bare metal stent arm with a hazard ratio of drug eluting relative to bare metal stents of 0.92 and a p-value of 0.67. There was no difference in patients with and without diabetes, in patients with one or more than one target lesions, and in patients with younger or older saphenous vein grafts. There was also no difference in the incidence of death, cardiac death, myocardial infarction, and target vessel myocardial infarction. There were similar rates of revascularization, either with percutaneous coronary intervention or coronary bypass graft surgery, 
as well as the rates of target vessel and target lesion revascularization. There were also similar incidents of definite and definite or probable stent thrombosis. The use of antiplatelet medications was similar in both groups, with approximately half the patients receiving a P2Y12 inhibitor at three years after enrollment. When examining the entire duration of follow-up, the median follow-up was 2.7 years, there was still no difference in the incidence of target vessel failure, with the hazard ratio of drug eluting relative to bare metal stents being 1.11, with a p-value of 0.46. There was no difference in all-cause death or cardiac death. There was no difference in the incidence of myocardial infarction or target vessel myocardial infarction. There were similar rates of revascularization, either with PCI or coronary bypass, and similar rates of target vessel and target lesion revascularization. There were also no differences in the incidence of definite or definite or probable stent thrombosis. The study is limited because nearly all patients enrolled were men, as is typical of VA studies. Also, the study was completed before reaching the revised enrollment target. However, still, it had en enrolled more patients than initially planned, and the post hoc power was 86% for detecting a difference in the primary endpoint. So in summary, when stenting de novo vein graft lesions, DIVA showed no difference in either the short or the long-term outcomes between drug eluting and bare metal stents, which has important economic implications, and also suggests that novel strategies are needed for the treatment of severe vein graft lesions. Thank you.